Welcome. It is December 1st. This is the Mycroft DevSync meeting. Um, we're just going to go through again real quick and get everyone's uh, status updates uh, and take any notes about things we might need to have meetings about uh, offline. So I'll uh, start with Chris Bear. Yeah, so uh, I got some testing done today. I did have to make a change to my query, but uh, everything seems to be looking pretty good now. Um, I also made some changes to the API that I'm going to provide to Ken. Um, and Ken, we should talk about that because it's not quite the API that's in the document, so um, for various reasons, but it should still serve your purpose. Um, so yeah, um, I need to test that API endpoint a little bit more, but uh, other than that, I'm ready for something different to do. Uh, I will have obviously. Um, I'm waiting on some code reviews. I obviously have to have to um, you know, put all this into production and everything. But, um, yeah, but yeah, that's part of coding and construction. Plan. Okay, great. Uh, let's talk about that uh, right after this meeting. Okay. Um, Derek, how's it going? Hey all. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, we're working. Today on changes to the SK240, I talked about there's still a couple things left to finish up, um, mainly around switching to this new um, single button in the middle for the top piece and um, uh, changing a few things in the back because the power is running up to the back. Uh, the other thing I was doing is today we got parts going out to our um, Hopefully, our partner on the assembly side of things. Um, this will just, is just the uh, what will be the first couple hundred developer units. Uh, what we call the dev kits back in, in the original Kickstarter days. Um, and so, this is not a three D fully three printed design. Although I want to get one to them as soon as possible for that as well. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and send the laser cut and all parts necessary. Um, are going to go out today. And um, so for tomorrow, I am going to start looking at, I haven't done anything yet, but I'm going to start looking at the packaging um, and basically got a bunch of stuff for Sprint 18 uh, regarding the fulfillment and all that. Um, so yeah, one of the things outstanding is uh, packaging and manual and stuff like that. That we would want to include with these kits. So we'll be starting to look at that tomorrow. Okay. As well as um, Johnny and Josh and I are going to have a meeting to talk about ordering. Uh, going to get on the schedule for today. Um, but I'm going to I'm going to send those those parts as quick as possible so that you know we can get this conversation um, started and we may be talking about sending parts to the assembler as opposed to ordering them here and then. Sending them somewhere else afterwards. <laughs> right, yeah. I'd save them shipping, if nothing else. Um, right. All right. Uh, Gets. Um, yeah, the transfer image, uh, the Ubuntu local transfer image is uh, all working. Um, a big thanks to Blue Systems. Um, we've been working with, with Antcore to, to migrate um, our previous. Configuration over. Uh, the the Wi-Fi connect isn't isn't wired up yet, um, so that'll be tomorrow, and then start to get to all those smaller tickets, um, like the DB rules and all that sort of stuff. Um, but uh, oh yeah, so this is a, a good, a very good step forward. Um, I think once the Wi-Fi connect is uh, in there, then we can get it out to everyone and. Start using it on a daily basis. Um, other than that, we've mostly been catching up on community PRs and things. So um, we have a new method in in the GUI to close the, the skill, the UI for the skill, um, and make that easier. Um, and some getting back to some of the skill settings fixes that we talked about before. Um, yeah. Is there a document or will there be somewhere on how to wire our 
places up to Bandicore when you guys are done with it? Yeah, so what I'm, uh, I'm actually thinking we take two approaches. Um, uh, so for, for like the majority of the team, I think we have a, a central, we have to use the, the central management functionality. Um, and, you know, so for like Derek, for example, I don't think you want to mess around, bother messing around with Antcore's back end system and pushing individual containers and all that sort of stuff. You just want like a device that sits there and when there's something ready to, to be updated, then one of the dev team hits the button and, and pushes that out. Um, and that also then helps us to, to test that process as it's going to be used for, um, for you know, uh, retail consumers. Um, and then, yeah, we'll have some documentation on how to do the, uh, how to do stuff manually, um, for to get it, need that more fine grain control. Okay. Sounds good. Great. So, um, I'm just going across the, the board here. So Emily, did you get what you needed from Kevin? Have you been able to uh, work on the PCBA quotes? Uh, I pinged him. He said he'll have it for me early tomorrow, hopefully. Okay. All right. Uh, Josh. Oops. Uh, Josh is next. Thanks. Uh, I built the financial model for the next two years uh, and then had some discussions with that and then have been working with one of the lawyers uh, surrounding discovery. Right. Okay, thanks. And Ken. Uh, so real quick, uh, yes, did I hear that the uh, automated pushes to the devices happens every night at midnight? Is that currently turned on? Or do we have to manually push to the So in other words, is Mark to always push? Right. No, at the, at the automated build happens every night. Okay. I have a demo, and since we're a voice system, I don't need a screen. Uh, hey, Micro, uh, set the volume to 90%. Okay. Change to 90%. Hey, Micro, set the volume to 30%. Hey, Micro, set the volume to 50%. Hey, Micro, set the volume to 50%. Hey, Micro, set the volume to 99%. Okay, change to 99%. Hey, Micro, what time is it? Any hard hearing to that? Hey, Micro, what time is it? Well, it's a little slow. It's a bit sluggish, like myself. Uh, anyway, so I have the um, code ready, uh, and I've got everything working end to end for the first time. Uh, this is a Kivy image, by the way, but now there's no. I, I've refactored out the Mark II skill. We don't have to worry about that. I have two lines to get the change in the new system Mark II skill, so it doesn't mess with the ICC bus. Um, I can't validate that the fix, which is in Michael's fix, is working 100% because I don't have an SJ201 that's working in lead. So while this one came up and didn't have sound, and so then I pressed the activate button and 30 seconds or 60 seconds later it magically had sound, I couldn't see the visual where it goes red for like mm. until it's ready and then it goes black. So I'm assuming that once I have a working SK201, that'll work fine. None of this code will change um, once the new ITS stuff is done as well. I think that's a completely different path and this is simply for volume. And I'm assuming that the only thing that would change here would be the actual command to the uh, to the XMOS chip regarding volume. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this pull request together, put it into the Mark II branch, and then um, load it. Um, or update my image with it on my Canacore build 
Uh, if that doesn't work, I have a workaround for the QT image, just run a QT image, and then you can just go in and switch to the Mark II code line and do a git pull and, and then run the hot dash image. So we have options there. Um, it was it was quite a, a bit of work actually because when I turned off or reset the XMOS chip, um, you can't just yank out the rug from out underneath the site and the audio server and the listener and all of that. And so I actually have to turn off, <laughs> I have to stop the voice service, stop the audio service, give them a little bit of time, reset the hardware, give it a little bit of time, bring up the audio service, bring up the voice service, and then it, it'll work. So it's, it's actually a 60 second process to update. Um, I haven't optimized those timings, but I'm sure that they save the work. So, um, yeah, and it's just a workaround, I'm assuming, until the IQS is out, so I'm not going to spend a lot more time on it. In fact, a lot of the code is blank. But uh, we will have working code and hardware once I get this pull request in. And, uh, and that's it. And now I approved the pull request for somebody. I don't know where it is. It was pretty voluminous, and I didn't have an opportunity to get to everything. I'm assuming you know what you're doing, whoever the pull request it was. So that's my update for today. And I will work with Chris tomorrow after I get this committed and start moving on to the machine learning aspect of things. Okay. Thanks, Ken. Um, yeah, appreciate the demo. Uh, and the... Uh, yeah, in the update, the, the more extensive modifications you had to make there. Um, if it's not a change that you can make generically that you think we should push to core, uh, I'd at least like to make a note of what you had to do in terms of starting and stopping these other services, because it seems like um, there's, uh, you know, feels like one of those things where there's tendrils going in lots of places where maybe there should only be one place where the audio gets started and stopped. Um, well, what I have to do is actually run the stopmicro.sh command and the start micro.sh command from within the script. Hmm. So there's, it's actually a, it's a really nasty hack. It's actually down in the GPIO interrupt switch handler for the action. And whereas you used to simply say start listening and kick off that process, he now does what I told you he does, which is he basically shuts down the services, then resets the hardware, and then brings them back up. So it's your standard micro start and stop, uh, except you can give them a specific service name. So that's what I did. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I think we should make a note of that. It seems like there might be room for improvement there, even if we don't need to do it right away. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. again, once we have the new SK201s and everything's working, I go in and I uh, change a couple of lines of code to oh I don't I don't mean that there's a problem with your hack I expect your hack to be a hack um, yeah. I'm, I'm saying with the underlying architecture it seems like maybe there's a problem that we have in that you have to do the hack uh, uh, yeah I mean you could look at it like well it should recover when the microphone handler loses the pulse audio but you know, that's, there's a lot of, like you said, there's a lot of tentacles down in there. Yeah. Uh, between yeah. Pulse Audio and Alisa. And so this is a very rudimentary mask you have. Yeah. To get okay. It over this particular home. Yeah. All right. Great. Um, well, I guess that's everybody except for me. And I don't have much of an update. I've been preoccupied with biz dev stuff. So, um, uh, so I guess that'll be it for today. Uh, are there any other, um, issues that people want to bring up or, or things that we need to talk about. Any word from Kevin on the progress of putting those together? Mm -hmm. Can you speak to once again? Not as of right now. So I'll, uh, I'll ping him okay. and see what's and up. And I was going to ask, what's the, what's the ETA on a, on a QT image? Uh, that is loaded through Panticore and runs with updates. It sounded like it's really close to done. Um, yeah, so the, I think it's worth just waiting for the Wi-Fi connect, unless you want to, unless you put it connected by Ethernet, um, in which case the primary thing could work for you. Um, but tomorrow... Is it, does it come
come up by default into the pairing, the pairing stuff? Yeah, it's it's the same as it's basically the exact same thing as the demo symbols that we were using before. Yeah, I don't know if anyone's going to study your your it's the same it's the same thing as the butterfly. <laughs> I thought I, I thought I saw in the chat the Panacore said that right now it's all through to the old default network manager Wi-Fi setup. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, it's okay. I I, I want to uh, the question I'm asking and being too specific. The question I'm asking is how much, how long until we can turn it on and, and replicate the end user experience that we're expecting to ship out of the box, even if it's yeah. just rudimentary and it's just starting to work. Yeah, that should be smart. Okay. So, and then do we have a process in place that if I ship the unit tomorrow to, yeah. let's just say that magic, that Kevin's stuff magically comes up first time, I ship a unit tomorrow to John Dore, right? Um, that it will turn on and you know run through the whole thing, and then John Dork can leave this sitting on his desk, and it will continue to update and prove itself. Yeah. Okay. And do have we defined the process of like what's the workflow going to look like when Ken puts in a patch for whatever, and it flows through this entire process from start to finish? There shouldn't be any patches. Um, the tickets that we have outstanding with Panacore our designs that we don't have to patch anything. And once I push this pull request through the Mark II repository tomorrow, that should be the latest image that's coming out of camp. So let me let me read it. Let me read the time. I would just I would define a part. Any anything that goes into our anything that goes into our normal repos. So like if we make a change to Microsoft Core, we make a change to Precise, we make a change to Mimic, anything like that. Um, that will get packaged up every night for the next build. Um, so we're, we're trying to build everything from source rather than you know do prepackaged things so that you know any change will actually get reflected as soon as possible. Um, and then the other place where we may need to make changes is in the packaging of Panacore itself, which is through um, uh, essentially .dot file. Um, so you know if we wanted to change something about um, how C groups work or something like that, you know, some of the underlying Linux um, stuff, then we would change it there. But yeah, so any change that Ken makes to Microsoft Core, for example, that will, um, we can either trigger it straight away or it will, it will get built up in the, in the next night. All that stuff is working. And here's my next question is, um, so, One page that are instructions where I can take ice on my on my desk here and make it a Mark II up in my up in my kitchen. Uh, you cut out a little bit there, but with the the gist of it, is there a one page sheet that explains how to do this? Is that what the question was? Yeah, for me as a as an end user of the system, I can grab an image somewhere, flash it to this guy, go set it in my kitchen, connect it to Wi-Fi, associate it with my account, and the eight skills will work. Yeah, so there should there shouldn't be the need for any instructions. It should be flash the image and stick it in the device, and then we manage the update. Yeah, that'll be done tomorrow at this time. That's yeah. I don't okay. want to be a naysayer, but I say nay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like it's ready today, except that. I'm not, it, I mean, I'll, I'll break. I'm sure that I'll break it within five minutes of touching it. So don't worry well, about that. Let me but, the level of why I would such a horrendous thing. So there's a bunch of gear tickets out for Panacore. They have to do with UDEV rules, they have to do with uh, you know, permissions and groups and stuff like this. Uh, there may be even a couple of other ones out there, I'm not sure. And until such time as they've had a chance to complete those gear tickets, which I didn't get the feeling that's what they were committing to today. They were committing to having a working bill where the the GUI message bus and stuff is working, and the, uh, maybe the, uh, the Wi-Fi setup is working. That's how I felt like they were kind of leaving it, that that would be working tomorrow. That would be great progress, by the way. And then I think they're going to need to be gently nudged regarding some of the gear tickets, and they're going to have to do that, and then I'm going to have to test it and make sure that that's working. So I would be cautiously optimistic, 
that the answer to your scenario, Josh, would be maybe by end of business Friday. But, you know, obviously it can happen before that. I'm just saying I would think that Friday would be probably the earliest we could say, yeah, we've gone through this process. We've pushed the new image to Hanacor. We verified everything else. Okay, and then the, the limit work because we haven't put that code in our repos yet. I'm so, sorry, what was that, okay. sir? Like things like the buttons and stuff, they're not going to work tomorrow for sure because we don't have the code for that. In our, I'm going to push day. that pull request if not tonight, first thing in the morning. And so okay. by the time they build, it'll be part of the build. Cool, okay. So so let me rewind this conversation a minute, and I know that we're at it. We're, this is not supposed to be a cool. Uh, Ken, you told me that the LEDs were not, that the way you phrased it, where they were not working, but I suspect what you meant is they are not exhibiting the production behavior that we're expecting when it comes to resetting the bus. They're actually, are they gliding up and spinning in a circle? No. What I meant is I, I have either a defective SJ201 or an SJ201 with a bad AC timing uh, firmware. Uh, okay. So you, so you did speak accurately. They're, they're not working. My qu my next question is, how are we pushing updates to the AC timer uh, Okay, I can answer that one. Um, on the Rev3 boards, there is no way to push updates to the AT Tiny. So uh, okay. on the Rev4 board, uh, they can be pushed via the Raspberry Pi. Uh, okay, so I just, and on the Rev3 board, I would have to pin some things out and flash it. Well, you need one of these one time. It's a one pin programmer that you get from the the people who make the the tiny chips. It, I, yeah, it's not um, worth doing at this point. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, I think I understand where we are. Uh, good work, folks. It seems like we're about to like break through. Like, Tim, uh, the when you're like, hey, let's be all the Europeans. Um, we're not the Europeans, but I'll show you this uh, Here, you know, you look the rugby, you're in the scrum, and you got the ball, and you're, you're charging, you just can feel the whole thing giving away, right? Like, and it's an open field to the goalposts. Do rugby use goalposts? <laughs> I love it when Josh tries to make sports analogies. He knows as much about sports as I do. Yeah, well... I do know you're supposed to have a quarterback if you're playing football, which the Denver Broncos appear to have forgotten. See, I do, I do read four newspapers every day. Uh, okay. Well, it sounds fantastic, and um, yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, agreed. I think uh, if we can get a working unit fully up and updating by the end of the week, I think that would be amazing. That would be so I mean, I'll put one in my kitchen and then we'll start pushing data back and, and Chris Sayer can get the data pipeline fixed for the and we can move on to and uh, and then you know flipping the the flipping the you know starting to provide real value back in that causes people to start paying. Yeah. So All right, go team. If we can buy five dollars with that additional cost, you sell then some of these. maybe you can afford to buy some batteries for that headset so we can hear you. And don't break up when you get more than five feet away from you. <laughs> oh, it's, it's on my. It's a phone call. It's not a. It's it's not a thing. All right. Okay. Sorry. I'm I'm excited. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, thanks. That'll be it for today, and uh, we'll pick it up again tomorrow. All right. See everybody tomorrow, and go team.